coming up today on Studio 13 Live. We are sitting down with the talk show queen herself, Sherry Shepard. We'll chat about Sherry being renewed for two more seasons and the advice Oprah gave her. Plus, it's not well. We catch up with actress Laura Dern to chat about her new movie with Hugh Jackman, The Sun. Then Mary Hill Winery stops by to show us some of their delicious wines. And Lil Red's takeout and catering is here to cook up some incredible barbecue. Studio 13 Live starts right now. I want to see you smile, take you another mile. Don't gotta wait, don't gotta wait, don't gotta wait today. It's happening all around, like sunshine through the clouds. I'm gonna Hello, I'm gonna welcome. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We're so excited to have you. I'm Carly Henderson. And I'm Mira Mayofsky, filling in for Rhea, who's back tomorrow. But until then, I get to hang here with you. Yeah. Okay, so we've been getting so many sweet messages from you at home, and I want to give a couple shout-outs. So the first shout-out goes out to Victoria Lurback, who wrote in to compliment our theme song. Isn't it Love so it. good? We're always dancing, and it's just genuinely... I think it kind of gets excitement. you upbeat, gets you a little it happy before, before it comes out to yeah, us. Yeah, that's all Erin sure. Callum. That is my friend. Yeah. Um, and Cynthia Glass wrote in to ask about my costume from the seaplane store yesterday. So isn't that a fun one? I love getting dressed up for I a know. theme. You, you know, a theme party. If there's not a party, I'll put in a costume You played anyway. the part and you look good. The whole <laughs> Thank thing. Thank you. That was so fun. Um, all of you at home are so awesome. So we love that you're spending your day with us here. And remember, you can always send us a message on social media at Studio 13 on Fox. And we look at them for sure. Yes. Yeah. Well, we have some good news out here today. The Daily Show returned last night for the first time since Trevor Noah's departure last month. So it's been interesting. There's a whole lineup of guest hosts. And first up was comedian Leslie Jones. Yeah, so she took over the seat last night. But she says that she would not be interested in the gig <laughs> permanently because talking about politics every day would, quote, bring her down. She's going to be hosting the rest of the week. Um, other guest hosts include uh, Wanda Sykes, D.L. Hughley, Chelsea Handler, Sarah Silverman, as well as Al Franken, Hassan Minaj, Cal Penn, and Marlon Wayans. That's a good lineup. That's a good lineup. I remember right after, you know, Trevor said that he was leaving, people were speculating who yeah. they wanted and putting out all their votes for who they wanted. And I, I really think that they got a lot of these ones. Leslie Jones was highly recommended. So yeah, for sure. And I love Chelsea Handler. She makes me crack up. She's very political, but then she backs it off and makes it in a funny way. And yeah. I don't know if you've read her book, but some yeah, of the stuff in her book is so funny. I mean, she's so brutally honest, like yeah. even down to I don't know how to operate the TV remote control because <laughs> I've had so much and she's like brought it back down to life. Yeah. So she's kind of uh, gives some backhanded slaps to yeah. the politics and it puts a little light on it because it can be so hard. Right? Yeah, she For really sure. wants that job, too. I know right after Trevor said he was leaving, she was like, I was making calls, letting people know she's hosted a late night show before. She's definitely yeah. used to the grind. And so is Hassan Minaj, too. Yeah. I loved his Netflix show. So it'd be cool. I think he could definitely hold it down. Either of them would be great. For sure. And over. they do that. I I love when they spin it off and have people come in and trap because sometimes it's not quite a fit. I yeah. remember when they did that on ABC with um, Kelly Ripa, Ryan yeah. Seacrest, Michael Strahan. They had all these people in there. I remember thinking, I like Kelly Ripa. She's not in the paparazzi. Yeah. And I watched her on All My Children way back in the day. Oh so, gosh, yeah, yes. it was it was fun to see her rise to yeah, success. Yeah, she didn't even realize that she was, like, so up good. for the job either. I just finished reading her book, too. We were talking before yeah. this how I love reading books of, like, powerful women in this yeah. industry. She had no idea. They just plucked her from All My Children, and they were like, she has a great personality. Let's try it out. And she was kind of like, who, me? Oh so my gosh. we'll see if that's how it is for Daily Show. All right. Well, we'll move on now. Actor Jeremy Renner is out of the hospital and recovering at home with his family. If you remember, he was injured in that snowplow accident a few weeks ago in Nevada. It was pretty tough. The 51-year-old Hawkeye actor underwent two surgeries after suffering kind of blunt chest injuries. And he's expected to recover along the way. He's healing and the process is going well, but it is going to be some time for sure. Oh my gosh. Sending him all the love. For that sure. is so scary. Yeah. Okay. Meryl Streep has officially joined the cast of season three of Only Murders in the Building on Hulu. <laughs> and uh, fellow castmate Selena Gomez made the announcement on Instagram. Sorry. Hey guys, we're on set. Hey. What are we shooting? Oh, hi there. Season three. Yeah, right. The gang uh, is back. Hello. Yay. Yeah. Could this honestly get any better? Uh, uh, oh, uh, wait. Uh, well, I do think it could get a little bit better. In what Why? way? Why? What do you mean? <laughs> Steve, do you want the pillow? Yeah, oh, please. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Marty, anything you need? Uh, just the tea that I had asked for a half an hour ago. I'm okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay? Very mm -hmm. sweet. Paul? 
Oh my gosh. Okay, so details of the three-time Oscar winner's role are being keep, kept a secret for now. Also joining season three, the sexiest man alive, AKA Paul Rudd, <laughs> AKA Ant-Man. <laughs> the comedy drama series follows an ensemble cast starring Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez as they solve a mysterious murder in their Upper West Side building. Meryl Streep. She brings it. I mean, everything that she's in, the dynamics, the diversity, she is one powerful woman and I love to see her acting throughout her whole life, mm -hmm. the decades and decades of what she's produced out there. Yeah. She just makes you laugh and she can make you cry and she can bring it, she can talk politics, she can do whatever. For sure, this cast is everything too. And I, you know, I feel like, especially with Selena Gomez, not only is she starring in the series, she's also executive producer of right, the series. Right. And I feel like with her and, and many other, you know, young Disney Channel stars, they always almost feel like they have something to prove. She called herself a wannabe when she yeah. was making this announcement, even in the caption. And so I'm just so happy for her and how good that must feel to have really proven it and to be executive producing and starring alongside one of the biggest, if not the best actress oh, of our generation. For How sure. Cool is that? I know, it's so much to learn from her. They always laugh at me here. Uh, at the station because in the background I always have Law and Order playing. I'm like, that's the gateway to meet Meryl Streep. It yes. is, for sure. It's in the background and you know, the music, dun dun, and they make fun of me, but I'm like, this is the way. You see every actor at a young age go through that and she's just worked her way all the way yeah. up. So someday a dream to work so for her exciting, yeah. <laughs> or with her. Okay, this next story, you're ready for this? This yes. is a fun name to pronounce. Yeah, <laughs> Icelandic luck. soccer player Zara Bjork Gunnar's daughter, I'm probably butchering it, just like her own teammate did. Uh, well, she won her claim against former club the Lions after she wasn't paid for her full salary during her pregnancy. So this is interesting. The 32-year-old actor, well, she trained and she won this claim because she fought for what was worth, you know, her money back in 2022. And I think it's something that's an important topic to talk about. I know how this feels, you know, to not have the right amount of time off or while being pregnant. And mm -hmm. she trained the whole way through while she was pregnant. And mm -hmm. so um, to win a feat like this, it's something very interesting. I trained while I was pregnant. Oh my gosh. Um, you have to be careful with for soccer? sure. With soccer. Yeah. Um, with my first one, I was more like, hey, it's six months. I'm going to train and do this. But then on yeah. the second one, I realized it's probably not so smart to go past that yeah, yeah. time. Yeah. But the hard work the that she put in to get there, it was oh definitely good for the community and the world of soccer women fighting for that for sure and yeah. i always think of you know iceland as like this little utopia yeah. too and just having it all right but she had to really fight to get paid for that and yeah. i think that you know as a woman too so when you do stand up for yourself in that way you're making the path easier for other women in the future so if you need any motivation to try to fight and try to kind of get what you deserve and yeah. and what's fair and what's equal that's your reason right there. Yeah, well they sure to tweet yesterday congratulating Sarah on her successful claim, the first case of its kind since FIFA's maternity regulations claim into force in January of 2021. So the two-time Champions League winning midfielder switched teams shortly after playing with the Lions at Euro 2022. So that's a big deal. Amazing. That's a really big deal. Really big deal. Yeah. Um, let's talk about someone on another continent here. <laughs> okay. So one man in Sydney, Australia is looking for some help before <laughs> he has to have a really really <laughs> awkward conversation with his roommate. So he rented a five bedroom house and then he subletted the other four rooms to four other people. Well, they all lived together <laughs> for two years and now the lease is coming up for renewal and the roommates want to sign on. Here's the problem. <laughs> They've been unknowingly covering his portion of the rent, the whole thing, this entire time. So some people say that he's been flat out stealing from them. Other people say it's his place and he hmm. can charge whatever he wants to sublet. You know, I'm kind of torn on this because I know how it is to organize a place. You get a house, yeah. you're the first person who goes in, you sign the lease, and then you kind of get everybody else on board. Uh, maybe a discount. Maybe if he was up front and said, hey, I'm going to discount this because I'm doing everything or I'm going to be paying all the bills and the utilities and things like yeah. that. But to maybe keep it so secretive. I don't know. I've known people who've done that, and some people just don't care. They're like, I'm glad I have a place, and this rent seems decent. But. Yeah, that, it, well, and they're willing to pay it, too, so clearly it seemed fair to them. Right. And the thing is, he's kind of a businessman here, right. you know what I mean? And people do this all the time, but usually they're, they're the owners of the house. It's yeah. very, you know, entrepreneurial that he was the one who was willing to, to you, know, you know, take on the lease, and then he yeah. found all the other people himself, too. So it's not like he did anything wrong, but I don't know that once the roommates find this out, that they're going to 
to be happy about it and will want to resign. Like they, I'm hoping they weren't friends. I'm hoping this was just a yeah. transactional relationship because they're not going to be happy after well, that. Well, I think the thing is, too, is they live there probably for so long, right? Are they mm -hmm. going to be able to find another place for that same price? Maybe not. Maybe, not. Maybe they'll all just, you know, be begrudgingly agree to keep doing it. I don't know. We'll uh, see how that goes. Oh, my gosh. Okay, let's talk about this. So people often make lists of things that they want to do in their lifetimes, but what about things that you never want to Ooh. accomplish before you die? Someone asked that question on Reddit, and it went viral. It's kind of called an anti-bucket list, and it included things like, climbing Mount Everest, bungee jumping, mm. skydiving. No. Some people also do not care to take a cruise around the world, to swim with sharks, to cave dive, to get a tattoo, or run a marathon. I could skip a marathon. Okay. I'm I a horrible just gonna say, runner. I ran a marathon. I've oh run, my a, I've run a marathon and a couple half marathons, so I would do that. Yeah. I would not bungee jump. I don't know. I, I, have, wouldn't I have kids now. It just seems a little too scary for me. That, like, yeah. jumping off, I remember being in Hawaii. Maybe Maria did this, but jump <laughs> off kind of the cliffs or the rocks, and that was, like, I think I had to do it live for a social event, and I went, <gasps> ooh, three times on the edge. I finally did it, but oh my gosh. I don't know. Have you bungee jumped? I've never bungee okay. jumped, and it seems like I would do it after okay. you all saw what I did yesterday, flying in the sky. Yeah. I would not bungee jump. I, do, I don't think so, and I'll eat my words if I change my mind later, but the spine is a very important body part. I know. I just, that's, the, the jumping part, I could get over and okay. I could do, but the snap back no. is what freaks me out. No. I would cl climb Mount Everest, though. Yeah. I would do that. I could skip a tattoo. I would I would swim with sharks. It's so funny. I wouldn't climb Mount Everest. I wouldn't uh, <laughs> swim with sharks. I'd do a tattoo. I'd run a marathon. <laughs> I'd do things like that, but it's so I'm not going to eat worms or anything. Or <laughs> no. I would if I had to, but that's, that's probably on my anti-bucket oh list goodness. as well. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, coming up, this is so exciting. Okay, Laura Dern is joining Love us her. to talk about her new movie, The Sun. And we're going to get the scoop on what it was really like to work with Hugh Jackman. All right, but first, let's check in with our friends over at the Anchor Desk. What are you guys talking about today? Well, today we have an exciting message that's sure to grow on you. Get ready for the 40th annual Tacoma Home and Garden Show, January 26th through the 29th at Tacoma Dome. With more than 500 inspiring and enlightening experts and vendors, you're going to get great ideas to transform your indoor and outdoor space. Meet experts from local nurseries and stock up on house plants, bulbs, garden accessories, and more. Plus, learn about emerging trends in interior design and home renovation. And new this year, the Tacoma Makers Market, featuring artisans who followed their passions and started businesses during the pandemic. Come see their talents and take home a unique handcrafted item. Ready for the best part? Opening day, January 26, admission is free. That's right, zero dollars. Thanks to the good folks at Hunt Services for picking up the tab. After that, it's $15 for adults. Kids 12 and under are free of charge, and so is the parking. For more information, log on to TacomaHomeAndGardenShow.com. Now, let's get back to the show. What's going on? Are you on drugs? You think you can just live your life doing whatever you feel like? What's happening to me? That is a scene from The Sun starring Laura Dern, Hugh Jackman, and Anthony Hopkins. Joining me today to chat about the film, actress Laura Dern and director Florian Zeller. Hello, thank you so much for chatting with Studio 13 Live today. Thank you for Thank having us. Thank you. <laughs> yes, well, you've made an incredible film. And Laura, you've done so many phenomenal roles from Jurassic Park to Enlightened to Taylor Swift's Bejeweled music video. Might have been my fave, personally. <laughs> what was it about The Sun that made you think, I have to be part of this project? Well, it starts with an extraordinary screenplay adapted by Florian and Christopher Hampton from Florian's play. Um, which was a gift to all of us and, and an essential conversation for, for culture. But before that, I had seen Florian's first feature, which uh, was The Father, a companion piece to The Son, and fell so in love with the film. So, so both, um, and his, his warm embrace to invite me into this incredible story uh, was just a gift all the way around. Absolutely. And Florian, what was your first impression of Laura? And also, what was the thing that surprised you the most about working with the icon that is Laura Dern? Um, what surprised me, I would say, the generosity um, to, I mean, she, she's the kind of actress who is completely 
you know, committed to to the film she's making, and that's that's like a, a rare privilege. And she's the greatest, um, as we know, as an actress. No, no, that's true. But she's also a mother, and you know, she's brave enough to explore her own emotions in order to share them with the audience, in order to make something that is meaningful. And I think that's uh, what is a real artist, and I'm very impressed by her. Absolutely. And I, I feel like, you know, going into those emotions, like you mentioned, it must have been so hard to kind of let that go at the end of the day. What were your sort of pick-me-ups or how did you sort of, you know, yeah, make yourself feel really happy kind of going out um, after you, you know, wrapped that, set, that scene for the day? Well, you know, it was uh, a rare, ultimately, a rare privilege to have made a family on this film, partly because of COVID protocols. It was still in the height of COVID, um, and with amazing Hugh Jackman and his cracked open heart, which he offered to all of us, and our crew, and beautiful Zen McGrath, who played the son, and Vanessa Kirby, we were all in a bubble and, and sort of sharing our time together, um, which is an amazing way to, to find release and community at the end of these very painful but enlightening days, because the conversations continued organically, because everyone we spoke to not only on the production, but when we would call home and speak to friends and they would ask what we were working on, the conversation is in their home. The conversation is in their family or their friend's family because everyone is dealing with mental health crisis on some level with someone they know or love. Absolutely, and I'm, gr I'm glad that you brought up, you know, your onset family. Working with Hugh Jackman, is there anything you kind of learned from him or picked up from starring alongside him? Such a good cast. Well, I mean, I'll let Florian, who who had another kind of experience with, with Hugh, uh, directing him, but he's, I mean, let's be clear, the news is out. He is the nicest man in Hollywood. Yeah. He is the kindest. Um, and on this experience, particularly the bravest and boldest person that you could know. Um, separate from who he is a, as an artist and what he gave. You know, I, I'm so moved by Florian's compliment to me, but I would say it's, uh, it's the perfect compliment to Hugh, because the way he allowed who he is as a father and a son to, to be embraced in this story and to explore as a man and artist was really mind-blowing. Absolutely. You told an incredible story, and you can really tell how close the family was on set, too. So, Laura, Florian, thank you both so much for taking the time to chat with Studio 13 Live today. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, you can catch The Sun this Friday, January 20th. Coming up, we are joined by Mary Hill Winery to check out some of the delicious wines they are serving up in the Woodenville Tasting Room. And we are chatting with actress, comedian, and talk show host Sherry Shepard. Her advice for everyone who thinks it's too late to follow their dreams. Hey, it is Wine Wednesday, and today we are chatting with an award-winning winery. They were named the 2022 Ooh. Most Valuable Producer by the Washington State Wine Awards. It's so awesome. Joining us in studio today, we have Craig and Victoria Luthold from Mary Hill Winery, and we're so happy that you're with us today. I love wine. <laughs> yeah, awesome. it's always Great. a good day. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about uh, Mary Hill Winery and all your different locations. All right, well, we were founded in uh, 1999. We opened mm. our doors to the public at our tasting room down in uh, on the Columbia River near Goldendale Ooh. in uh, Memorial Day weekend of 2001. And uh, it's been a heck of a ride. I mean, uh, making wine in Washington State is such a fabulous thing because yeah. It's one of the best places in the world to grow grapes. Yeah. And so making good wine is something that uh, we can do without too much problem. Well, I love that we can feature it here and kind of get people um, in tune with what's going on right here in mm -hmm. our own backyard. Because Absolutely. sometimes, you know, people think buying it from their own homeland is not like it's better if it comes from Napa Valley. Or... Sure. So get us into this. What are we looking at today? Well, uh, we've got three wines here today. Our Albarino, which is my personal favorite. Okay. If you're not familiar with this grape, it's the most widely produced, produced uh, white grape in Portugal and Spain. Okay. Oh. 
So that's where its origins come right. from, is Portugal and Spain. Um, ours is grown in the Yakima Valley by uh, Tudor Hill Vineyards, okay. uh, yeah. by the Tudor family, who are a fourth generation farming family. And uh, well, it's just, I, mm. I call it a Ooh. red in white's clothing. Oh, that's true. So oh. it's rich and full bodied, like a red wine is, but it's yeah. got that nice, crisp, acidic finish, like I just, a white. I was going to say so the finish because you kind of taste it and then it gets on your palate and your mouth exactly. at the end, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> what, would, no oak. what would you pair yeah. this with? Any kind of any cheeses, cheeses yeah, we've get... got some cheddar here and some Romano, mm. so uh, any robust cheese and nuts and fruit would be fabulous. Okay. Seafood is incredible. All right. Mm. Crab. Mm -hmm. well, and I know you guys have accomplished a yeah. lot. You've won awards. Tell us about some of the accomplishments you've had over the years, too. Well, of course, this one is fantastic because it's in our own home mm -hmm. state and you know, being the most valuable producer award is is a wonderful award to receive. But probably the funnest is uh, that in 2015 we were picked as the uh, International Winery of the Year at the San Francisco International Wine Competition. That's amazing for you. And it's the first Washington winery to win that award right, in uh, San Francisco. Yeah. I'm like, let's do this all around. <laughs> That's great. So, That's well, awesome. what else do you have? Let's keep talking about okay. your awards and pouring and. <laughs> I like this. So, so next we have our uh, most widely uh, distributed and, and largest produced wine, our winemaker's <laughs> red. It's just a really wonderful, I call it our pizza pasta burger wine. Okay, okay goes with everything. It's just everything. about everything, and uh, it's a blend of Cab, <laughs> Merlot, Cab Franc, and Syrah. Ooh, Ooh love So call it a Bordeaux with a twist. It's okay. a little Syrah added there in the middle to give some earthiness to the mid-palate. I love a Syrah, mm. and sometimes I have trouble with a Cab, like too heavy. Or not oh, so perfect. This is, yep. Well, blends so are blends too. are the new way to go in uh, in especially Ooh, in Washington. Kind of you know? softer. Ooh. It is. That's yeah. nice. It really to nice, a lot of easy drinking Ooh. wine. Yeah. they're both so easy to drink. Yeah. And we've it, been doing this blend since 2000. Okay. okay. Well, okay. I'll see you guys. Yeah. <laughs> She's good. Wait, this is great. <laughs> and you guys have a special intern program. I heard. Tell oh, us yeah. about that. Yeah, uh, this is really fun. So actually our winemaker, Richard Batchelor, came to America on this intern program. Mm. It's called Communicating Through Agriculture. Okay. And it's uh, a special visa that we get for agricultural interns. And every year we bring oh, wow. in interns from around the world. This year we actually had four from India and one from Hungary, but we've had almost 20 different countries represented as interns in our winery over the last 20 years. Yeah. So oh my gosh. it's super fun to get to know people who have different cultures and of course learn about what they do for winemaking and why they're interested in it and yeah. you know, why did you come to America to learn about wine uh, tasting? And it's a making. launching point for their careers maybe into it this is. business. I mean, internships exactly. are great, yeah, right? For sure. Yeah. And many oh, countries fun. around the world actually require them to go right. abroad for a, for a vintage. Oh, okay. I love that. Mm -hmm. What is cool. this one, real quick? Yeah. You might have already mentioned it, but I was tuning in. So, the this old is one. the reserve <laughs> Zinfandel. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So, it's 100% Zinfandel, and all, that's the one thing on all of our labels if it says the mm -hmm. variety of grape, okay. it is 100% that grape. Okay. okay. This is three different vineyards blended together. So, it's the estate fruit uh, down right where we are, the Gunkel Vineyard, Clifton Hills Vineyard, and McKinley Springs Vineyard, all blended together, but 100% Zinfandel. And oh it's our gosh. reserve gin. I like, I like the sweetness of it. I like the I like the sweetness of it, but I'm still going with this one. I feel like the first one, one the really white's smooth. my yeah. favorite. This is yeah. bone dry, but it's really high in fruit. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is. You mm -hmm. get that oh really fruity flavor. And before we let you go, you have some Valentine's Day specials. Oh, yeah. so let's talk about that. We do. So uh, for Valentine's, <laughs> uh, you could come in. We have special pairings for uh, people when they come in, and uh, it's a, a, a specific uh, bit of food with specific wines. Each one of our locations is a little different. So aside from Woodenville, we have a tasting room at the Vancouver waterfront, oh, cool. and we also have one in uh, Spokane in Kendall Yards. Nice. So cool. So we, we decided uh, to... Uh, take our wines to the urban areas because, yeah. you know, we saw how popular Woodenville was and we really wanted be people to be able to not have to drive over the yeah. top of the mountains to get there because it's really a destination if yeah. you're driving three and a half hours down to the winery. Yeah. So now it's only about 30 minutes, go out to Woodenville and we're open all the time out there. We'll have to come see you And there's there. no yeah. excuses to not try it when it's in our yeah. backyard, right? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Craig okay, and Victoria, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks our pleasure. This is delicious. This is, thank you for having us. <laughs> yeah, you can find Cheers. more info on our website, fox13seattle.com. You can just click on Studio 13 and then get those links there.
All right, well, coming up next, Sherry Shepard joins us to talk about her talk show being renewed and the advice she got from Oprah, believe it or not. I just have to say, for those of you, I, I get emotional, those of you who feel like nobody is seeing me, nobody is hearing me, but I have so much to give, and you feel like it may be too late because you have so much to give, God has not forgotten about you. <laughs> That is Sherry Shepard after the big announcement that her daytime talk show, Sherry, has been renewed for two more seasons. Such an incredible accomplishment. And joining me today is the queen herself, Sherry Shepard. Hi, Sherry. Hey, how are you? Good. So good to see you and be chatting with you today. Um, first of all, I have to give you a huge congrats because your talk show is the number one new syndicated daytime talk, talk show this season. And it was just announced that your talk show has been renewed for Two more seasons. How does it feel to be you? Um, that's surreal because I know that, you know, we're only four months in. So to get renewed for two seasons is what, wow, that's very cool. <laughs> that, you know, it, it feels good to know that people have connected to what I am putting out. Because you always wonder, are they going to come to my party? <laughs> is anybody going to show up? Are they going to like me? So that feels good. I relate to that. Um, and I loved your renewal announcement on your show, too. <clears throat> and I think one thing that really struck me was how you said, it gets greater later, which is so inspiring, because I feel like so many of us fear aging, especially in this industry. Talk to me about that, and what are some of the things that kind of keep getting better for you, either personally or professionally? Wow, you know, it's so funny being at this age, because I've had this dream for so long when I was younger and had the stamina, <clears throat> the energy, but I knew that I was not ready. 18 or 20 years ago to have my own talk show, even though I had the dream. And it's having to have matured into this dream. So I really feel like this is a perfect age for me because I am very clear on what I am trying to do with my show who I'm trying to connect with. I'm very clear on the segments I want. And it's also inspiring when you see other women, you know, Jennifer Coolidge and Cheryl Lee Ralph and Nisi Nash and mm -hmm. Michelle Yeoh. We're all the same age. So it's like, I feel like people are, are seeing us in the totality of what we can do and what we can offer. I love that so much. And I want to talk a little bit about your journey to get here and where you are today. What did like 18 year old Sherry want to do? And if you could go back, what advice would you give her? Oh, wow. 18 year old Sherry just had, you know, just she just had big dreams, but she was very, very shy and she was very socially awkward and she never knew how to get there. She just knew she wanted to, you know, make people happy. So the advice that I would give young Sherry, I would say, take risks. It, everything will get better. You don't have to, don't be so obsessed with one event because it literally will get better. You won't even think about it anymore. Don't be so obsessed about what people think about you, but stand up and just go for it. Sherry, where were you when I was 18? I needed this advice here. <laughs> I love it, that's great advice. Um, what are some obstacles that you had to overcome and how did you kind of stay focused on your path? Oh, obstacles that I had to, oh gosh, getting my car repossessed, getting evicted, staying on people's couches, relationships breaking up, you know, being a single mom supporting my son, trying to figure out if I was going to work, being fired. So a lot of those obstacles, but I just knew that I loved what I was doing. And I just had to believe in myself and know that something else was going to come. You know, when I was released from The View, I sat there and I was like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. What am I going to do? Is anybody <laughs> going to remember me in Hollywood? And what am I going to do? And it was literally like this soft, still voice said, do you trust me? And, you know, with that, I got a phone call maybe two weeks later from Will Packer saying, we got a movie called Ride Along 3, would you? You know, and then I got a call from... Uh, the folks who did Cinderella on Broadway, Rogers and Hammerstein's musical. And they say, hey, Kiki Palmer's playing Cinderella. Would you like to play her stepmother? I never stopped working. So, you know, just believing, knowing that it's not going to stop for me. For sure. I, you just always have to keep your eye on the prize. Even, even I always say to like a delusional point. <laughs> Absolutely. You just have to keep focused on what, it, why you got here. Why, you know, why are you doing it? And I love what I do. And, you know, I always say if, if nothing else works, I can always go back to doing stand up because that's what I love. For sure. Okay. So with the talk show, what's kind of surprised you the most? 
With the talk show, what surprises me the most? I've never worked at this level uh, having a talk show. This is stuff that Barbara Walters always did on The View. I just showed up, I was talent, and then I would go to the plays and go to the parties, and that was it. No, like, I come in early in the morning and I leave when the lights are off. So it's it's leading, it's management, it's booking, it's segments. You're always on the phone, you know, 24-7 with people about aspects of the show. It's how do you improve, you know, oh my gosh, the lights, the cameras. I've never worked at a level like this before. For sure. And uh, you've had some pretty exciting guests on too. I know Janet Jackson surprised you on your show. What was going through your head when that happened? First of all, I couldn't believe every time I slept outside of Warehouse Records to get a ticket to one of her concerts, how she made me feel with all of her songs, sleeping outside of, you know, their their estate in Encino, California, when I was a senior in high school. So many different things. Like, this is an icon. This is a legend. And thankful to John Murray, our executive producer, for putting that surprise together for me. So... She's like, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's Janet. <gasps> no, your reaction was the cutest too. Um, okay, I have so much more that I want to ask you, including the advice that Oprah gave you when you started your talk show. So stick with us. We'll be right back with more from Sherry Shepard. Hey, I am back with Sherry Shepard. Okay, Sherry, so I know Oprah reached out after your show was renewed to give you a little advice. What advice did she give you? <laughs> she said, uh, Sherry, now you've proved that you're funny, that the show is light, uh, you know, that, you you know, I think was those those words she was saying. And she said, now what are you going to do? And I was like, prove that I'm funny and that the show is light and, you know, fun. And she says, no, you have to elevate it. And I'm going, but we just got on the air, like a little three year old. We just got on the air, Oprah. Uh, but she said, yeah, she said, you have to not look at any of your competition, you have to sit and say, how can I make this better than what it was before? That's so really good advice. She's giving me a lot to think about. Yeah, so, I mean, we're, we're, we're hosting a brand new talk show here in Seattle. Is there any advice that you would give me here? Well, I think you're great. Like, I, I, am, I know that I'm having fun talking to you. So if I'm having fun, then that means you're having a good time. So I think I wouldn't give you any advice. I wouldn't dare. I'm having a good time. So you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Oh, thanks, Jerry. Um, I want to talk about Barbara Walters. You know, she recently <laughs> passed away, and you worked so closely with her. How did working with her kind of prepare you for having your own show? Oh, I think that Barbara's toughness really played a big part over here because I, it's a level that I've never worked at, but, you know, Barbara taught us not to give up. Don't just walk away and sulk. You stick with it and, and push through it. And that's what I'm doing here. She taught me to be curious about people. So really, I'm sitting there with no cards. I just want to know about who this guest is that's across from me or that's cooking for me or showing me the latest gadget. So, gosh, she just taught me to find, know my voice. I found my voice because of Barbara Walters. Oh, and what kind of role beyond just on air, what role did she have in your life, like personally? Oh, she was like my mom, you know? It was like she was tough on me, but she loved me. She would encourage me. She showed up for everything extra, that, except with the exception of Dancing with the Stars, because that was in California. But she showed up for everything that I was involved in to support. I love that. Um, let's talk about a couple segments you have on your show. We've got the best life and she's a boss segments. Why do you feel like it's so important to kind of incorporate all these aspects of well-being into your show and to highlight women who've, you know, started these incredible businesses? Well, first of all, like our best life series, I want women to know, you know, this is an age like I'm in my 50s. And a lot of times we don't feel seen. And also we feel like we've given up on our dreams. And I want to inspire women, you know, to live their best life. Our, you know, she's the boss is like, again, to inspire people like step past the fear and don't fear failure. You know, the people who come on our show, we had so many folks, uh, the founder of Good American and all natural hair care dolls. And it's like, they come, Barbara Corcoran, a real estate guru, they come to show women that you got to not feel fa fear failure because failure is what propels you. And it really inspires our audience. So if I can give them that mixed in with laughter, we have dating, you know, segments for women in their 50s, because I want to show women it's not over. Like, it does get greater it really if you does. let it. Yeah, I think just, like, failing forward, too, has been a big thing that I've learned as well. Um, and you, 
you're so all about, you know, supporting other women and especially other female comedians. Why do you think it's so important to do that and to support other women? Oh, I love my Laugh Lounge because I feel like when people are going through so much in today's, you know, what they're facing, it's doom and gloom. Your spirit is heavy. We will need to laugh. And they also need to see other women doing it. You know, that's a field that I say we need more women in the field of comedy. But I think to show women that everyday things can make a person laugh. I just want their stomachs to be hurting when they're doing <laughs> comics. That's a good goal. Um, you've done so much in your career, too. I mean, sitcoms, movies, comedic roles, dramatic roles, panel talk shows, and of course now your own talk show. What has led you to this moment in your career? And what can we expect from Sherry Shepard in the future? Uh, I think this particular point in my career, my acting career, was I was very successful in that lane. But I think this has just always been a dream. And I got so many no's that it was devastating to me. And I used to always pray and go, Lord, like, why did you give me these things that I have if I'm not supposed to be doing a talk show? And it just seemed like it was never happening. And I don't know. I think that really was like, God, he didn't forget. He didn't forget about the promise. Uh, that he had given to me. And I'm very thankful for that. And I know that this blessing that I have is affecting other people who are on this team. So it's exciting to see what this show is doing for other people who are on the team as well. It's so exciting. Sherry Shepard, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with Studio thank 13 you. Live today. We love talking to you. We're watching you and we're always rooting for you. Thank you and thank you for having me. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon. All right, Carly, that was a great interview. Love that, Sherry Shepard. So coming up, bosses share some of their craziest excuses they've heard for missing work. And we'll share some of the wild excuses you at home have used. Keep it here as Studio 13 Live rolls on. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. Okay, so what are some of the craziest excuses you've heard or used to get out of work? I'm not gonna share mine. No, I haven't done uh, any. <laughs> I've heard like stomach problems, but that's kind of embarrassing because everybody knows what that means. <laughs> yeah, or you can say, you know, it's female stuff yeah, going it's on. Yeah, that time of the month. Yeah, well, people are breaking it down <laughs> online. We have it for you. So one boss says an employee claimed that her car skidded on ice and hit a telephone pole, which might have been believable <laughs> if it wasn't in the middle of summer. I don't Someone know. else claimed they had malaria. Oh. Another boss was told, quote, my cat just had puppies as an excuse for missing work. Um, you yeah. gotta think these through a little more. Not so much. Yeah, pay attention to the season. Pay attention to the animal. Um, let's see what some other people are saying online. Okay, so many tweets about this. So Ren says, I told them my snake escaped from its tank and bit my roommate. Uh, that sounds like weird and believable. Whenever it's super specific, it's kind of believable. Oh, right? that happened once. I think my cousin had a snake and I did not like that. It really oh. happened. All right, Alex, existential dread of valid excuse for missing <laughs> work, boss, I swear. I mean, that's just a mental health day you need to take. The maid says, was making TikTok videos. I, that's too honest. That's too honest. You're you're gonna get yeah. in trouble. With yeah, that for one. sure. Well, maybe the honesty you won't get in trouble, yeah. right? Yeah. Akram thinks says my father is at police and my mother is in the hospital. Yet my father is a police officer and my mother <gasps> is a nurse. Uh, see, they what? were telling they were kind of telling the truth. So it was weird lies there. Um, Yvonne says it wasn't actually fake, but I was too open. I said running stomach. Mm. Ooh. All right, <laughs> okay, you got it. Mashy <laughs> says my favorite excuse for missing work is that my dog died. Okay, don't say that. No. It has died 17 times this year. No, not loving that. We one. don't love that. Don't bring that into the universe. And also, your boss is going to pay <laughs> attention there. Seven. 17 times? Come and then on. what about if you post about it? Like, my dog yeah. has his own social media at Loki the Looker. Ah, oh, mine does too. Waffles the Wonder Pop. Okay. Our we'll dogs have to should check be them friends. Out for sure. Play dates for sure. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, work on those excuses, friends. Okay, coming up, we are joined by a local takeout and catering place that serves up delicious Jamaican and soul food. And stick around. Carly's going to love this one. We have <laughs> what Little Red is cooking up for us some barbecue. I see you smile. Take you another mile. Don't gotta wait, don't gotta wait. All right, welcome back to Studio 13 Live. And you guys, it is time for 
Emerald Eats, where we feature amazing food throughout the area. Oh, We've been yeah. eating and drinking our way through this We day. have. This has been a great <laughs> show today. And today we're joined by some great people. We've got Erasto Jackson and Brandon Wilson from Little Red's Takeout and Catering. Thank you so much for coming in here today. Thanks for yeah. having us. This place smells good. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Jamaican food and soul. You've yeah. got to get us uh, into this course here right away. Yeah, so what, have? what we have here, you know, we just kept it simple. We do uh, sliders. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we do uh, larger sandwiches. We do brisket sandwiches and we do pulled pork sandwiches. So these are just a smaller version of uh, what we do for our sandwiches. So right now we're putting together uh, some brisket sliders and some pulled pork sliders for you. Ooh, it looks good. It looks awesome. like football food yeah. for sure. So tell us all about Lil Reds as you're kind of getting those ready. So Lil Reds uh, was uh, a little dream of mine. Um, I started selling food out of the back of a station wagon. I know the health wow. department loves that. Uh, <laughs> everybody starts. That's no. okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I would drive around to like the different barber shops and uh, uh, like Jiffy Lubes and different places like that, and mm -hmm. I'd sell plates out of the back. And then I'd go down to the Port of Seattle when they wow. would come in in the evening to get their jobs, mm -hmm. and I'd sell out of the back down there, and uh, it just grew from there. So, so you're used to showing up places and they're feeling very happy when they see you. They're very happy. Oh my goodness. But very now you're happy. not out of the back of your station wagon. Where are you? Um, I'm located on Rainier and Genesee in the old Mondo's Meats building. Okay, um, cool. I actually missed the station wagon. It was uh, it was a <laughs> lot of fun to drive around and talk to people and uh, put things together for them. And, uh, you know, see their reactions when they ate the food. Well, yeah, you were kind of pre-game ahead of the food trucks, right? Because we yeah. do food truck Friday, and there's lots of people cooking out of uh, vehicles and things. Well, I, everybody asked me why I didn't get a food truck. Um, the reason being is mm -hmm. with food trucks, these are caramelized barbecue onions. Whoa. Oh my gosh, I've heat. never heard of barbecue onions. <laughs> well, I figure yeah. onions go great with beef, so, uh, you know, wow. we'll put them on top of our sandwich there. Yeah. But uh, I, everyone asked me why I did not get a food truck. Mm -hmm. With food trucks, you, you move around a lot, and uh, people have to figure out where you are. With a brick and mortar, you know, you're stationary, and everybody mm -hmm. knows where you're at day in and day out. Mm -hmm. and, and in case we miss it here, you are a little red. I yeah. am, no, I am red. No, oh, you're red. Oh, Lil there's is, a little? What's who? Lil is my wife. Oh, oh that makes sense. So it's named after your wife. Well, you know, she's put up with me for 15 years, so I figured she's deserved something. Well, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of red to love here. So if you were little red, you know, this is big love and red. Right? This is big, like. I, you know, it was just a little play on words. You know, yeah. my nickname in college when I was playing football was Big Red. I oh, God, awesome. that's awesome. So it's like little reds, and then everybody looking at me, like, you're not very little. Uh, well, so did you always say, I'm looking for my little red? Like your partner? No comment. Oh, <laughs> you know, nicknames are so fun. I love that though. Today I was trying to give a nickname to Carly. I said, You're Carly Henderson. Do the people call you Hindu? And she's like, I haven't been called that. Never. I'm like, You really? can be Hindu. People called me Mayo in college because it's Mayovsky and they couldn't nice. quite get the rest yeah. of the last name. So. so, Hindu, Mayo, Red, what's your nickname? Sincere. What is it? Sincere. Sincere. Oh. How did you get that one? <laughs> I'm not going to get into That's that. That's a story for another day. Well, gosh, this looks beautiful what you're making up here. Uh, let me turn Look this at this. There. So, as so what's the trick in making this as delicious as it is, other than made with love? That's just it. Yeah, yeah. that's love. it. Yeah, that's just okay, it. Okay, wait. Tell me about the coleslaw on top because I'm always a fan of putting the coleslaw on top to get that palate taste to mix it in. Why well, I mean, you... traditional barbecue yeah. restaurants, you have to have claw on top of the pulled pork. You yeah. know, I mean, that's. You know, that's just tradition. Um, the thing is, we didn't want the traditional uh, coleslaw, so uh, we have different seasonings, and then I don't use any mayo in my coleslaw. Okay. Good, I, because I do not like mayo. <laughs> but it's your nickname. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm going to give a shout-out to my mom and my husband. They love it, and they love to eat it. Ooh. Well, oh we actually... I came up with this uh, coleslaw dressing that I make. I'm not going to tell you what's in oh it. Oh, my okay. gosh. Okay, it's wait. a secret. Start, start filling up my plate All here. All right. <laughs> well, we're going to give you a beef slider first. Okay. There I'll try go. these, Carly. Yeah, you try those. Okay. Um, I heard you got some good vegetarian items for me here, I, too. You know, I was thinking about you once I uh, they told me that you uh, would not partake in the uh, the meat selection here. Just I like it. And All this right. is on your menu, right? Yes, so you've got some good sides. Menu. 
So, I'm so just this is go a, ahead and my mac and cheese oh, here. That looks There's really three good. different cheeses oh in there. This? Yes. I can feel the cheese <laughs> here. Whoa, this is substantial. Wow, I just mm. served myself a big portion, didn't I? Help yourself. And then, how is it? It's very good. I think you took big, too big of a bite there. I'm glad you guys did a cutaway. And that then, would have been hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me what else we have here. So we have our garlic mashed potatoes. Okay, love a mashed potato. We have our Jamaican rice and peas. Mm -hmm. And what makes it Jamaican rice well, and the, peas? Well, the, that's how they're made. It's a, okay. a Jamaican uh, uh, dish. Um, it's made with uh, coconut milk. Oh, oh wow. yeah. Ooh, that sounds good. I love my that. My wife actually makes that. My wife is Jamaican. That's oh. where the Jamaican influence comes from. And what's her name? Cool. Little, little, her little name Red. Is, her name is Lil Leaf. Oh, we call her Lil for short. Oh, so cute. Well, I'm so excited and then to we get got some into candy these. Yams here. Oh, this Ooh. is so good. I've got to try this one, and it's going to be a, a messy mm. bite. It's going to be it's barbecue. It's supposed to be messy. You guys ready for this? <laughs> oh, my gosh. These are so good. <laughs> mm. Mm. Mashed potatoes. Oh. So creamy. Mm. Two different flavors on that. That's, yes. Look at this. Mm. 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 You know when it gets quiet, it's a good meal. <laughs> <laughs> it's good and caught in my teeth. This no. is so yummy. Mm. Mm. Oh my wow, y'all know what you're doing there. This is so, so good. Thank you very wow. much. Wow. What other kind of what other kind of sides do you have there? So I mean, we're primarily a barbecue restaurant, mm -hmm. you know. So we have traditional barbecue stuff. We mm -hmm. also do some Jamaican food and some soul food. Mm -hmm. um, I love it. So as far as some of the other sides go, we also have collard greens, red beans and rice. Ooh. We have jerk pork fried rice. Great. Uh, Jamaican. We have jerk chicken. We have curry mm -hmm. chicken. Oh we do oxtails. <gasps> Well, we're gonna have to come see you there. <laughs> There's a lot more to find out. Yeah, Brandon, thank you so much for coming in. Well, thank this you for having us. Awesome. This is awesome. And we posted a lot of info on our website about this too. So just head to fox13seattle.com. Goodbye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. Okay, we have so much coming up tomorrow. We have to talk about.